all across America and around the world. This is Veterans Radio. This is Veterans Radio. Welcome to Veterans Radio. I am Jim Fossone. I'm the officer of the deck today. We've got some great programs for you. I think you'll find very interesting. We always want to remind you, you can find more about Veterans Radio at its Facebook site or by going to veteransradio.net where we're on the web 24-7. You can find a lot of our podcasts there as well. We post new ones every Tuesday, so you can get a new story, a new interview, something you didn't know before by going to veteransradio.net. And before we get started, we want to thank our sponsors. First up, we want to thank National Veteran Business Development Council, nvbdc.org. It was established to certify both service-disabled and veteran-owned businesses. You'll find out how they can help your business by going to nvbdc.org. We also want to thank Eisenhower Center. It's a brain injury recovery center. Learn more about eisenhowercenter.com. They're located in Michigan and in Florida. We want to thank Legal Help for Veterans. Legal Help for Veterans fights for veterans' disability rights all across the nation. You can reach them at 800-693-4800 or on the web at legalhelpforveterans.com. Contact us if you'd like to be a sponsor on Veterans Radio, and let's move on to our program. I'm Jim Fossone, and I'm an attorney with Legal Help for Veterans, and we wanted to talk today about uh, the Purple Heart Award. We get a lot of questions here at uh, Legal Help for Veterans relative to that, and we always turn those over to Brigadier General Carol Ann Fossone, retired. Uh, she's a nurse and heads up uh, our problem-solving division of uh, legal help for veterans. And and uh, it's amazing how many times we get asked about the Purple Heart and how do I get a Purple Heart uh, that I either earned or maybe my parents earned, my dad earned, and we don't have a copy of it. Um, as many people know, the Purple Heart was established by General George Washington in 1782. It was uh, really one of the first recognition awards. There's a whole lot of history around it, a whole lot of uh, sort of breaking the barrier. American uh, servicemen didn't want to be like Europeans who were dripping in awards, and so there was sort of a disinclination to to give out military medals. Uh, But the Purple Heart was the first one to recognize uh, those who had been wounded or killed um, in service of the uh, United States. There's certain criteria to be awarded uh, a Purple Heart. Uh, First and foremost, it's uh, any action against an enemy of the United States. But it's really more complicated than that because it can be, um, while in action with opposing armed forces of a foreign country in which uh, the armed forces of the United States has been engaged, it can also be while you're serving with friendly foreign forces engaged in armed conflict. There's also, in the regulations, it can be as a result of an act of a hostile foreign force. There's been changes to the requirements over time, including recognizing the role that injuries as a result of international terrorist attacks may uh, have occurred to military members, Um, and also the recognition that uh, military members may be so injured uh, in peacekeeping forces around the world. And then uh, certainly there's also some uh, regulations dealing with service members who are killed or wounded by friendly fire, which unfortunately happens. So, Carol Ann, we're glad to have you here to uh, talk about the Purple Heart today. Uh, maybe maybe give sort of a high-level um, explanation to folks about what they should understand about uh, qualifying for the Purple Heart um, and, and again, you do many of these phone calls with, with both service members and family members. So walk us through that a little bit. Sure, Jim. Thank you. 
Well, one of the most important things I can share with the audience today is this regulation um, has been revised, and it's a lot simpler. According to, there's a new reg, AR 600-8-22. This was adopted 5 March of 20. Um, 19, and it does simplify the process. It describes who is deserving of a Purple Heart, and sometimes with the examples that they give in theater, um, and it also gives you examples of, believe it or not, those that do not qualify, which is hard a lot of time for people to understand. And so some of the, you know, enemy-related injuries I think that we're all aware of is the enemy bullets, the shrapnel, the projectiles, um, mines, traps, IEDs, um, warfare, chemical, um, chemical, biological, or nuclear agents. Um, some of those are, I think, very obvious, um, but it's the process that goes along with that wound that will award you the Purple Heart. So let me ask about um, injuries caused by vehicle or airplane accidents because, uh, you know, you might get injured in a car accident or a vehicle accident and be qualified for um, VA disability, but it it takes another level or type of vehicle accident, doesn't it, to um, qualify for um, the Purple Heart? Yes, any of those accidents uh, that occur have to be related literally to enemy action. Um, So if you've got an accident on a truck, um, just because you got a wound or you needed sutures, etc., does not qualify you um, for the Purple Heart. And so that gets really um, hard to explain sometimes to our veterans. And I suppose this is the same thing with concussion injuries. Um, You know, we hear from guys who got concussions playing sports while in the military, but that doesn't qualify them for a Purple Heart, does it? Well, it it depends sometimes on the situation. Um, Some of those concussions will definitely award you the Purple Heart, but you have to be... It has to be caused by... um, some, some sort, of, sort of enemy action, though, right? The example I'm trying to explain is for those people who got a concussion playing football, uh, that wouldn't qualify for a Purple Heart, would it? No. No. And, I th- again, I think there's times where, you know, a guy might hear, hey, I got a Purple Heart for a concussion I had, and the guy next to him at the, at the Legion post is wondering why he didn't get it. And it's really about whether or not the cause – was related to enemy action. Well, it's the cause, but it's also the critical point that they stress in the regulation. If you've seen a medical officer, if you have been confined to duty, um, if you have been pulled out of duty for 48 to 72 hours, and just because you get downtime does not constitute that. And it has to be documented um, extremely well, and you have had to see a medical officer. And that's clearly described in the regulation, which I think they've done an outstanding job of deferring now what does going to qualify and what does not qualify for the Purple Heart. Yeah, I think the traumatic brain injury, the TBIs that people suffered uh, uh, as a result of IEDs has caused a lot of questions over time as to whether or not one qualifies or not. But those IEDs, again, we'd remind people are as a result of enemy action. And then you get to this next level of how much loss of consciousness. And, and that's what the new regs uh, uh, kind of clear up a little bit about how, how long you have to be out and, and whatnot. Is that, is that what you're explaining to us? Yes, because the mild traumatic um, brain injuries that sometimes might not occur, you know, months, weeks later, if there has not been a loss of consciousness or restricted from duty and it's not documented that you've seen a medical, you're not going to get the Purple Heart. And it's clear documented um, 
in the regs. Battle fatigue, um, there is a whole list. The one that surprised me, Jim, beyond all, and first on the list of the non-acceptable was trench foot. When we talk about Korea, um, that was presumed to be an environmental issue and not at all related to the Purple Heart. Um, And so the reg clearly distinguishes what is qualifying and not. And that's going to be helpful for not only the veteran, but the family members. Uh, uh, Again, uh, they may be viewing it as, but for my military service, this wouldn't have happened. But it has to be go back again to resulting from enemy action and the environmental factors like frostbite or trench foot or heat stroke are not uh, going to be a qualifying event. Uh, and as you say, there's a whole list whole list of them uh, that uh, the regs now put out that uh, probably make answering these questions uh, a little more helpful, I take it. It is, but it's still hard talking to the veteran who was in Vietnam or Korea that, you know, they suffered this. Um, I had one the other day. Um, the, the veteran um, ended up with... 29 stitches in his head, um, he's having continual headaches, etc. But um, he thought that's a wound, yes it is, that he's entitled to the Purple Heart. And clearly with the new reg, and um, I validated it through other sources, he will not get the Purple Heart. Yeah, again, it wasn't the wound wasn't caused by enemy action, and, and everybody's kind of skipping over point number one. Um, and as a uh, veteran disability lawyer, and those of us working here at Legal Help for Veteran would say, yeah, you may get uh, veteran disability, but it doesn't necessarily qualify you for the award. There's a specific sort of process for seeking um, determination of eligibility for Purple Heart. Uh, do you, you want to point out uh, sort of where down in Fort Knox this is done and, and the kind of documents you have to submit? Sure. Um, the great thing is the Awards and Decks branch is located in Fort Knox, and um, we could put it up on the website. There are forms there. There are email sites. And with this regulation, what they have clearly done is um, put out for you the steps. And it's very clear. It's, it's like a recipe. Um, the number one thing you need, as we you always hear, is your DD-214. You need that separation document. Now, if I look at a separation document, the DD-214, and I see on there, wounded, purple heart, I mean, that's almost like an automatic. You should get that. Um, so you need your DD-214. You need your um, your chronological medical records, um, and that's an um, SF, um, Service Record Form 600. You need your medical record documentation. You need a one-page narrative from you, the veteran, of what happened that day. The other thing that they're relying on, again, which is very important, is if you still have buddies from your unit, um, from Afghanistan, 2012, we were able to um, just get one approved recently. I had three or four of his buddies write up the incident. Um, It was clearly a Purple Heart awarding um, that got approved. The casualty records of the day is always really helpful. Any officer records, Anything that you have um, indicating that there was enemy fire that day, um, the result of the injury that you sustained. Now, the big difference is um, if you are still on active duty, there is a different little process. You need everything that I just spoke about, but you need the form 4187, which is your chain of command form. And this has been simplified compared to the the old process. Um, the command would need to certify that they believe um, it's in the appropriate um, action um, that you're deserving of the Purple Heart um, to go forward. But that's a command needs to initiate that while you're on active duty. And a lot of these come up uh, many, many years after someone gets out because at the time, you know, they weren't looking for any awards. They weren't looking for a pat on the back. They didn't even want this recognition. But as the years and decades go by, 
they see it as important. They see it as something that their family can hang on to, something that may create some additional benefits for them in the VA system. Is there a statutory time limit? Do I have to get my Purple Heart awarded within five years of the action or anything like that? Well, this is the other unique thing, Jim. This is the oldest award um, for us with the Purple Heart, but it also has a neat quality. Um, There is no statutory time limit with the Purple Heart. It doesn't apply at all. Um, If you get the required documents, you have and you meet the criteria that we just spoke about. Um, Your family members could apply for you. You could go back. You need the DD-214. You need you do need some medical records um, and some affirmation that this occurred. And then you could go in, follow the, um, the, what, the criteria that I've given you, and you could apply for your Purple Heart to see if you should have this award. It should be awarded to you. I have a couple more questions, but uh, there's always forms with the with the VA. So, um, is there a particular place where one goes to try to get the right forms uh, that I might need? Sure. Um, and let me see if I could give this to you. But this is a great website. It's https colon two front slash www dot va dot gov front slash find f-i-n-d hyphen in the middle forms f-o-r-m-s front slash well again sometimes it's hard to find this stuff so it's helpful to have uh, at least a starting point on the on the uh, forms but i wanted to ask a question that um you sometimes hear that somebody has had, you know, two or three Purple Hearts. Somebody who's been in real significant combat may find themselves injured uh, as a result of combat action more than once. And um, in, in many medals, you don't get multiple medals. You get the award, but, but they do something a little different. How does the Purple Heart uh, deal with those who've been wounded uh, multiple times? Um, Well, the Purple Heart is authorized for the first wound suffered under conditions indicating that we've talked about today, enemy fire, the the, the deserving of the Purple Heart. So let's say um, you're in an event and you... um, You injure your arm, you injure your foot, um, you take shrapnel to your abdomen. You don't earn three Purple Hearts, you get one Purple Heart. Then let's say you have another incident, a fire, explosion, missile, um, etc. Then you would be awarded, you have to go through the whole process all over again on another day, um, another time period within your service and you apply for it the same way and then if awarded you would not get another purple heart you would get the oak leaf cluster so you could combine when you hear people have three purple hearts it's that they have the purple heart and two oak leaf clusters and again, for, for our veterans, that'll be a familiar situation. A lot of folks get multiple medals and get the Oakley clusters to recognize those multiple meritorious service awards or whatever they might be. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, you've been doing this for 10 years now, helping veterans post-retirement. Um, do you still get uh, regular calls from people looking for help on their Purple Hearts? Oh, yes. Um, I probably am getting at least 10 emails, phone calls a month. And I think that's on the lower side. Um, Jim, I think um, people are realizing their service. And, you know, a lot of times um, it's not the veteran, it's our family members. And they're going through some of the memorabilia. They're finding paperwork. Um, They're saying, oh, my God, my uncle, um, earned a purple heart and we can't find it anywhere and and that's that's another interesting piece if you write in um to fort knox um next of kin can get that award um resurfaced if um you're aware that the individual has been awarded the purple heart 
and this doesn't uh, this doesn't require an advocate or a lawyer. Don't pay anybody for this. This is something you can do yourself um, if you're a veteran or a family member. Um, that's why here at Legal Help for Veterans, we are posting a new blog. We're doing this uh, interview, uh, and I believe there's a is there an ebook that's uh, coming out, uh, General. Yes, well, I, there are two ebooks, Jim. We have um, one ebook on how to update your military records because this is one thing that I would suggest if you do get a Purple Heart or you've earned a Purple Heart and it's not on your DD 214, you need to get that updated. So that's number one. And then we do have an ebook on that. And then within that, we also have another, as you said, we have the blog. And then within um, another ebook, book we have how to get the purple heart well we would hope that this information uh, made available so that uh, veterans and family members can do this on their own that they can have enough information to get started the f- the folks down at fort knox are pretty darn helpful but you do have to follow i think your word was the recipe you got to give them all the ingredients so that they can make a determination and we want to thank you today uh Brigadier General Carol Ann Fosson retired for spending a little time with us and helping advise people on how they might uh, upgrade to a, or, or, or get established that they're entitled to a Purple Heart. And if they're a family member and they can't find uh, dad or the uncles, maybe by contacting Fort Knox they can get an, another one for the family. So thanks for your time today. You're very welcome. And I want to thank everybody for listening to Veterans Radio today. I am Jim Fosson. It's been a pleasure to be your host. I'm a veterans disability lawyer at Legal Help for Veterans, and you can reach us at 800-693-4800 or legalhelpforveterans.com on the web. You can follow Veterans Radio on Facebook and listen to its podcasts and Internet radio shows by going to veteransradio.net. And until next time, you are dismissed. If you have a VA claim denied by the Board of Veterans' Appeals, contact Legal Help for Veterans at 1-800-693-4800. They're experts in handling cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans' Claims. Their number again, 1-800-693-4800. We again want to thank our national sponsors, the National Veterans Business Development Council, NVBDC.org, Eisenhower Center, VA Ann Arbor Health Care System, the Vietnam Veterans of America, Charles S. Kettles Chapter, Ann Arbor, Michigan. VFW Graf O'Hara Post 423 in Ann Arbor. And the American Legion Press Corn Post 46, also in Ann Arbor. They keep us on the air, as does your support. Go to Facebook, go to veteransradio.net, and support our efforts. And until next time, you are dismissed. This episode is made possible by PwC. A robot may not be coming for your job, but competitors are coming for your market share. At PwC, we pair the right tech with the right solutions to help you gain a competitive edge. Reimagine operations from the cloud, fuel innovation with responsible AI, and detect risks before they become headlines. That's human-led and tech-powered. It's all part of the new equation. Learn more at thenewequation.com. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.